in today's murli baba says that we souls are designed to have spiritual love for each other but because we have become body conscious so that spiritual love is not there now today we'll first understand what does body consciousness have to do with you know the lack of spiritual love but and then baba also says that when you become when you understand that you have to be soul conscious you have to become sato pradhan you have to become the purest and the most elevated again then when you strive to do that then you are able to come back to that state of spiritual love for everyone now so we will understand the connection between consciousness and lack of spiritual love but first let's understand what is spiritual love so do you have any idea what is spiritual love because you see we we only know lust and attachment we don't know spiritual love so we know love that emerges from the root of a vice okay so i know love that emerges from greed i know love that emerges from selfish interest i know love that emerges from the desire for the body or i know love that emerges from this feeling that this person should emotionally or financially support me but do we know love that is spiritual in nature that is uh, what we call essential love or love that is the essence that is you know that is our design love that doesn't come from any vice so you know there is this so i will tell you one uh, incident so there are these two people and they came with a situation and where they were arguing and one person was saying that this person thinks the other person thinks that only i need him and he doesn't need me so you know he treats me badly and then it's not like that we both need each other and he has to be respectful towards me if he is not respectful then this relationship will get over so i so you know because you know in a gyan kal you always think that you know one has to be respectful to the other because there will come a time when the tables will be turned and then the one who is in a higher position will come to the lower position and then the one who is in the lower position might go to the higher position so this is the logic we use to treat people well in the logic sense in the world but baba says that you know it this whole game who is higher who is lower whether the tables will be turned or not turned you know you get into this whole game and what you don't understand is being respectful accepting caring towards somebody doesn't require all this yes so that so in that incident i am narrating to you the two brothers each was saying that he needs me more so you know he should bow down to me first then i i just asked them so do you only think that one should be respectful and loveful when there is a need if there is no need if suppose you don't need me tomorrow today you have come here and today you are talking to me and you are seeking some help 
so you people are behaving nicely in front of me but let's say tomorrow you don't need me so will you just look at me on the street and not uh, you know not uh, not greet me or not respond to if i greet you or will you not pass a smile or will you not be respectful so then they said no no of course we'll do that with you so i said no i doubt it because the way you are fighting with each other <laughs> i don't think that if tomorrow you don't need me you will be respectful and loveful to me so then they said no no that's not like it so i said then what is it why you why will you be respectful to me and you know uh, why will you talk nicely to me or pass a smile so they said because uh, you are a nice person so i said and tomorrow if you hear something bad about me then what then will you stop that so then they said uh, no how we will not hear anything bad about you so i said no let's hypothetically assume that you hear something bad about me then what will you stop smiling so then one person said perhaps so then i said then if you keep smile if you keep stopping smiling like this and if you keep blocking your energy of love and respect then one day you will be very empty because you will not have any love or any respect in your own heart so so the reason why you have to be you know why you are loveful or respectful to someone is not because you need something from them or because they deserve it it's because that's your essential quality you are a soul and a soul is loveful is it not our basic nature when you were children how did you smile because of need yes but you know these days children also smile because of uh, these reasons so i remember there is this one little kid and he is i think 3 years of age and then um, i saw his masi giving him a 500 rupee note and you know before the masi gave him money he was not smiling at all with, to the masi he was only he had a frowning face and the moment the masi gave him 500 rupees he took it and he smiled so <laughs> these days children also have learned the value of money so that's also there but you know baba says that even before you are children you are a soul so you become a child and now you know 84th birth and you're carrying those sanskars so probably they are active in childhood also but you must know that as a soul love is your essential quality you are a loveful soul and what is that essential quality in action so how do i the loveful soul behave naturally so you see there are four aspects of spiritual love first is acceptance a so there is a a b c d there are four aspects so first is acceptance you accept everybody as they are because before uh, so you see when we talk about the seven qualities of the soul then the first quality is knowledge so you cannot be loveful if you are not knowledgeful so when i have the knowledge that every soul is unique and there is no comparison between one and the other and everybody is different from each other but they all belong to the stage and they have a specific part to play and there is a very good reason why they are who they are okay so you understand you see that somebody is not like you they are very different from you but that difference that uh, that seeing that they are different from you doesn't invoke emotions of you know a dislike or 
other emotions in you. So you accept people the way they are. Acceptance means you don't have any negative emotions about who they are. So you are not creating any negative emotions because of the fact of who they are. So that is acceptance of who they are. And just like I told you, the root of every virtue is knowledge. So first is knowledge, then is purity, then there is peace, then there is love. Yes, so, so there is first knowledge, then purity, then peace, then love. This is the order. So Baba says, when you have the knowledge that every soul is unique, different, and everybody belongs to this drama, and everybody belongs to Baba and everybody is Baba's child. So I don't have a right to judge anybody. I don't have a right to reject anybody. So the opposite of rejection is acceptance. So you don't reject who they are. So, you know, I will tell you one thing. So people these days, you don't only, you not only reject what people do and say, but you reject who they are. So, you know, we have come to that point where I have a problem with you being who you are. And the thing is, every soul is who they are. They cannot change that. So, it's the drama that decides who is who. And so I must have this knowledgeful state where I accept everyone as they are. And the second thing is belonging. So this sense of belonging because you see originally we are all brother souls. Yes, so have you seen that if you have seen your brothers and sisters grow up so, you know, some your brother or sister and you know them from childhood and so, you know, uh, when they have grown up, they have become very difficult also sometimes and their spouse complains or other people in the office complain about them and then you say, no, no, he's very sweet. He's not like that. He's actually very sweet. You don't know the real him. <laughs> so, you know, this this attitude that this is my brother, it invokes acceptance. So Baba says that I am giving you the knowledge that I am your parent and every soul is a brother soul to you. And with this knowledge, with this when this knowledge becomes a part of my consciousness, then the attitude of acceptance is created, the attitude of belonging is created. So, you know, you have this spiritual connection, you feel connected with each other, despite the fact that you are not related by blood or by profession or nationality. So every soul, with every soul, you have the sense of belonging that we are in relationship with each other because every soul is a brother soul and we are all children of the same parent. So this attitude of belonging is created through knowledge and consciousness. Yes. And then through this sense of belonging comes natural care. So you see that through this, the, this sense that you know everybody is a brother soul and even if I don't know them in this birth or we are not connected by blood or nationality or religion or you know by any other ways, I care for every soul because there is this deep sense of realization that we are brother souls. So there is this genuine care and this care doesn't come from a place of, you know, needing something, wanting something. 
it comes from a place where you know this is my brother so you know even if so i know people who um who know that this is my brother by blood and even if that brother has caused a lot of damage to their lives they still can't uh stop caring for them so this care is a, a by product of this realization the sense of belonging that this is a brother soul and in this care so this care because the belonging is spiritual in nature the care is also spiritual in nature so you care that the soul receives knowledge the soul receives love the soul receives baba's sustenance and you do everything to bring them closer to baba so that's the spiritual aspect of care okay so there is this spiritual love which involves acceptance there is the sense of belonging there is the care and then there is also detachment d is detachment because you know the law of karma and you know that every soul has a predestined journey and you can only care for them you can do what makes sense to you to do for them but then they have their own journey so you do not get entangled in their journey you have detachment you have understanding that they will take everything the way they are destined to take so there is no attachment there is no disappointment there is no expectation because you know that this is an individual soul on its own unique journey and you can you are a part of that journey and you will contribute in whatever way you can but you cannot really shape their journey or you cannot really change what their predestined journey is so you know that they have a karmic trajectory and they will go by that so this brings you to detachment so these are four aspects of spiritual love where there is complete acceptance there is belonging there is care and there is detachment and when there is spiritual love it is for every soul and it is the same for every soul so you know whether it is somebody who is related by blood to you or not it is the same with everybody yes and that is why you see and who is the who is the template for spiritual love baba so you see every soul says mera baba why because baba's love is the same for everyone and everyone feels the same love from baba everybody feels i receive the same from baba so this is an aspect of spiritual love now do you think that we have spiritual love these days do you for every soul do you feel that sense of acceptance belonging care and detachment i'm sure not <laughs> so there is a lot of you know this vacuum where there is no feeling of spiritual love and the only kind of love we know is selfish love so in the guise of love selfishness is playing its part so and then baba says that this natural quality that we had was blocked by body consciousness yes so so you see that when you are soul conscious you know that i am a soul and i'm here to share the love the peace the happiness the purity that i have within me and then you allow your love to flow to everybody so that is a soul conscious state of living in satyug we are soul conscious naturally so 
our our being so what is a soul conscious state like a soul conscious state is where you are happy peaceful loveful pure and in all your thoughts in your words in your actions in your drishti that love flows to nature to every soul around you so that is when you are soul conscious in satyug but then from dwapar yug what happens is body consciousness creeps in and then we lose this sense of spiritual love so we don't allow our be, we are beings of love right i am a being of love but i don't allow my love to flow to the other i just block it in body consciousness because you know when you become body conscious the first thing is i am a body and i need yes so spirituality is about so when you realize you are a soul you realize you are a giver and when you realize you are a body or you think you are a body then you become a beggar yes so so a body so body is made of five elements and it's always in need of food water air you know comfort uh, pleasure the body is always needy so when you become body conscious you become needy and anybody who is needy becomes selfish and anybody who is selfish starts looking at everybody is a, as an object to satisfy their selfish needs correct so this is how we start looking at everybody so when i start thinking i am a body i shift from this attitude that i am here to give to this attitude where i feel i have come empty and here i have come to fill myself so i am a needy soul and i need everything i need love i need peace i need happiness i need pleasure i need comfort i need sensual gratification i need 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 and when this starts happening then you start looking at everybody as an object that fulfills your need yes so a soul that is body conscious a soul that is full of lust ego anger attachment greed looks at everybody as an agent as an instrument that will fulfill their desire for lust ego anger attachment greed right so you think you have physical needs you think you have um, biological needs you think you have emotional needs financial needs and you look at everybody as a what do you say um so you become very parasitic basically and <laughs> you think that i have to always keep taking from others and this is body consciousness so you know there are these four words consciousness attitude vision and action so there is consciousness which decides your attitude so when you are soul conscious your attitude is that of a giver and your vision is that this is where i have to give so you look at every soul as a brother soul who deserves your love and your you know respect so do you see that consciousness attitude and vision are linked and then as is your vision so are your feelings so is your thought so is your action so this consciousness when i am soul conscious i feel that i am a giver i am a soul i am baba's child and everybody is a soul around me and i am here to share the gifts that baba has given to me and i come with the attitude of a giver 
I look at every soul as a worthy soul, worthy of respect and love. And then my actions are always loveful, respectful, accepting, caring. Because it emerges from the place of knowing who I am. And knowing that I am the child of the bestower. I am the child of the bestower of happiness. So that is soul consciousness. So soul consciousness is I am a soul and I am the child of the bestower of happiness. So then my attitude is I have to give happiness and my vision is that everybody deserves happiness and then I keep giving it. And when you become body conscious, then what happens? My attitude becomes I am empty, I am needy. And then my, then my vision is everybody is a source to fulfill my needs. So you are brought on this planet to feed my ego, to give me my emotional fulfillment, to quench my desire for lust, yes, or fill my need for property, money. So you are here just to quench my greed, my lust, my ego, my attachment, is it not? This is the attitude we have or not? <laughs> So this attitude and this vision where you look everybody as an, as an object to gratify your needs, this comes from body consciousness. And then there are two kinds of categories of souls that exist. One who fulfill that need and they become the recipient of your love. Yes, they become the recipient of your care, your love, your, uh, you know, your respect. And then when they don't fulfill your need, they become the re recipient of your, you know, disappointment, anger, and insult, and defamation. So you are looking at the world as somebody who should fulfill your needs and then where your needs are fulfilled you are well behaved you say I have good wishes for them you say I have love in the heart for them and as soon as they stop fulfilling your needs then all your attitude shifts yes and you start your feelings change you start misbehaving with them you start defaming them the very people who you were very tight with yesterday, you start defaming them, you start looking at their defects, you start, you know, uh, being angry on them, insulting them, because it comes from a body conscious attitude. And then the other aspect of body consciousness is, body consciousness, the other name of body consciousness is ego. And ego needs to be fed always. Yes. So how do you feed your ego? By, by looking at other people's defects. How do you feed your ego? Early in the morning, you point out that this person is making this mistake. And then you hold that defect in your intellect. And then you say, I am so much better than them. I'm doing everything right and I'm the good one and I'm the right one. So the easiest way to feed your ego is to put someone else down. And that's why you look at other people's defects. You don't look at other people's defects because you are concerned about them. You look at other people's defects because when they have defects, when you hold their defects in your buddhi, your own defects look smaller to you. Yes, and have you seen this conversation that we have in the household where somebody says you have this problem and you should change it and you immediately says you have a bigger problem, why don't you look about that, look after that. <laughs> so the thing is, you want to point out at the other person's bigger problem 
so that your own problem just vanishes. So you know, you don't want to look at your defects. So what you do is, you keep looking at other people's defects, so you don't have the time and thought to look at your own. But Baba says that there is one very beautiful law. You will become what you see. Seeing is becoming. Right? So already you have a lot of defects. And then you are not looking at them because you are busy seeing the defects of others and ignoring yours. And the thing is, in that whole journey of looking at other people's defects, A, you are not paying attention to improving yours. Second is, you are imbibing their defects also. You become what you see. If you are always focused on other people's defects, they slowly become your defects. Have you seen this? You live with a miserly person and every day you say this person is not spending, not spending, not spending. Slowly you have started holding on to your purse tighter and tighter and tighter. Yes, so his defect has become your defect. And I remember there was this one sister and she uh, she had a, a sister-in-law and that sister-in-law was lazy and when she got married the sister-in-law wouldn't knead the atta. So you know you knead the floor to make rotis. So the sister-in-law wouldn't knead the floor and then she would wait for this one to get the floor ready so that she could make rotis. So then this soul, my friend, she started always waiting for her to you know, need the atta. <laughs> and then slowly, gradually, her whole life was about who will need the atta first. Who will prepare the atta to make chapatis. That became the only focus of her life. And when she was one day complaining about it, I told her, do you see that making that dough ready only takes five minutes, but it has started consuming your whole day. So because you are looking at that person who has made this the priority of their life, so now it has become the priority of your life also. So this was not on your list, but now it is foremost on your list because you have only focused your attention on somebody who, on whose list this is the first thing that is to be decided who will need the atta. So you see that this is how it happens. So Baba says that when you are body conscious, first thing is you start looking at everybody as an object of gratification and then you only extend your care and feeling of belonging to those who are supplying you with your ingredients and then you block that energy as soon as they stop supplying it to you and then in that blocking of energy what are you doing? You are making less and less of it available to yourself. And then the second thing is when you are body conscious, you are only looking at other people's defects and in, that, in doing so, you are imbibing their defects and becoming more and more defected every day. And then Baba says that now you have to stop doing this and you have to start, you know, that backward journey or that forward journey where you again go back to spiritual love. And how does that journey start? So Baba says, first shift your aim. So first through knowledge, I tell you that you are a soul and your aim is not to, you know, take 
from everybody your name is to fill yourself so that you can radiate so baba says become soul conscious and look at baba because when baba is the ocean of virtues baba is the ocean of everything you need so baba says don't think you are a body and don't think your needs are physical and don't connect with other people as sources of your needs start understanding that you are a soul your needs are spiritual and baba is the one who will fulfill those needs so start becoming soul conscious and remembering me and second thing is instead of looking at other people's defects and becoming more and more defected every day look at me i am the ocean of virtues and when you look at me you will imbibe virtues so baba says you start shifting this and then slowly gradually you will create that state of soul consciousness and move back to spiritual love and then baba says that also you know even if you see somebody behaving really badly look at it knowledgefully that this soul is depleted and how will a depleted soul behave in this manner only the way they are behaving and then baba says this you know baba says that when you keep looking at other people's defects you think that you are perfect but baba says your own ego is not allowing you to see how defected you have become so don't think you're very clever and you're only looking at others to improve them start looking inwards and start removing your own defects by looking at me looking into the mirror of shrimat and checking and changing whatever defects you have so this is something that baba tells today there is this question what is the difference between bliss and happiness bliss has no opposite happiness has an opposite sorrow so bliss doesn't have an opposite so it's that permanent eternal state okay so this is something that baba is saying and then there is something also very interesting which i would like to talk about so baba says while walking and moving around i remember the father with a lot of happiness no matter how far you walk while in remembrance you will not become tired the more remembrance you have the more sparkle there will be so you know people think that um so people think that physical activity has something to do with your state of mind now let me um, put this like this so you know there is one school of thought which says that if you exercise and if you go for long walks then your body secretes happy hormones yes but then if you uh, if you do the same thing because you don't have a choice so let's say you are exercising and you are sweeping and mopping mopping the floor is that not exercise <laughs> so the maid has not come and then you have to sweep and mop the floor and then you don't have a cab or a vehicle and then you have to walk 5 kilometers then will that release happy hormones no you become very miserable at that time so you see that i the soul do everything through the body so when so it is my state of being my consciousness which releases the hormones not the activity so baba says that when you are in my remembrance then even if you are doing something which is very physically stressful maybe it's a lot of hard work maybe it's walking miles and miles but you will not feel tired 
because happiness or tiredness is related to consciousness it is not related to activity these days people say that you know if you eat chocolate happy hormones will be released if you walk happy hormones will be released if you exercise they will be released no happy hormones that is a separate issue this is a machine the body is a machine you must keep it operational so you know otherwise it will just um, jar so that's a different issue this is a machine so the body is a machine and every machine needs to be oiled and exercised so that's different but that has got nothing to do with happiness or sorrow so whether you are feeling happy or tired or sad or miserable or you're full of gratitude or you're full of you know these thoughts about how miserable i am that is all related to your state of mind and your state of mind is dependent on your consciousness because i told you the soul has consciousness and consciousness decides mind buddhi and sanskar what will be active okay so when you are in remembrance of baba baba says you can do anything everything and still you will not feel tired you will be very happy so this is one lesson that baba is giving us okay om shanti